Oh, <laughs> the struggle. This got to be the weirdest YouTube setup I've ever done. All right, anyways, let's get right into it. Hey guys, my name is Jackie. I'm a content creator and a part-time wedding shooter. I shoot a lot of portraits, um, weddings in the summer and event gigs, and I make a lot of TikTok videos and try to make this whole YouTube thing work out. So uh, that's a little bit about me. All right, let's talk about what's in my camera bag for 2023. This is a Peter McKinnon uh, everyday backpack. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this. I bought this on Kickstarter with two camera cubes. So was, I think it was 300 bucks, but I think right now on Nomadic's website, it's like 389. 999 so more expensive but i'm really glad i invested into this backpack this is my first ever camera backpack and i love it i'm i just yeah i carry this everywhere with me one big feature that really makes me love this backpack is that it stands on its own so no matter where i put it um anywhere when i shoot weddings or go on the shoot it's honestly so convenient that i don't have to lean this thing lean like any backpack against the wall or anything surface. I can literally put this anywhere I want, it'll stay up. It's like one of those things you don't know where you're missing out until you have it. And like for any other backpacks, I'm like, damn. I've been using this for about a year now. It's been holding up really well. Honestly, it looks good as new. I know for sure I scratched it up and like, you know, threw it around a little bit here and there. This is a more expensive backpack, but I think it's definitely worth it, especially if you hold a lot of gear. When I have like two water bottles on the side, it kind of looks like a rocket. <laughs> My friend was like, yo, Jackie, your backpack kind of looks like a rocket. I'm like, you know what? That's kind of true. Hydration check. Okay, um, we'll talk about this later. All right, let's open this thing up. Okay. As I said earlier, I have two camera cubes. I have this one the A7 for right here. And this spot is supposed to be for my A7S3, but that's what's filming me right now. So that's why I can't put it in here. The Sony A7S3 is my main video camera. I use it for all my weddings, uh, events, or anything video related uh, that requires you know, good quality 4K60, 4K120. I use that sometimes, but not all the time. But it's nice to have. That's 12 megapixels, and I think it's still really sharp. I even use it as my second uh, photography camera body when I shoot weddings. Even if when I zoom in 12 megapixels on Lightroom, I think it still looks really good sometimes i add a little bit of sharpening in lightroom but that's about it a 10-bit video on both cameras um honestly once you go 10-bit you you can't go back to 8-bit <laughs> like i just see it's like there's so much of a difference between 8-bit and 10-bit that i just can't go back like i mean i could go back but i don't want to before i invested into both of these bodies i used to have the sony a7 III and that was fine for the most part but i definitely outgrew the camera so these two upgrades has been a big plus for me a big investment and i really love both cameras the a7 IV is my main photography camera 33 megapixels Good sweet spot, um, not too much or not too little. For wedding photography, I use this as my main camera and the Sony a7 III as the secondary camera. And honestly, it's such a great combo, I love it. Sometimes I would even shoot more photos on the a7 S3 just because it has 12 megapixels and the file size are really small. I'm a run a gun type of shooter, so I really like the design of the a7 IV, the customized buttons, a separate layout for photos, photography, and SNQ. It's a perfect hybrid camera, so if I had to choose one, I'll choose this one over the a7 S3. My only complaint with these two cameras is that neither of them does have open gate. If you don't know what that is, basically open gate from my understanding is that it allows you to crop in more uh, for horizontal or vertical video and that's really important for content creators hopefully in the future the Sony a7s4 or something has more AI and open gate features and I'll definitely hop on on that um, I use the pro gate v60 cards on both of my cameras I have the 128 and 256 gigabytes um, never run out of space. I always do record just in case because having a backup gives me peace of mind. And yeah, talking so much is hard. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I have an attachment base plate for both of my cameras. I have really small hands. Like, this is a camera, like I have really small hands. <laughs> when I first put this on, I felt like a, I felt so empowered. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it just feels good having, like I can just grip it really nice and shoot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Another reason why I will always have this on is because it saved my camera from damage when I dropped it. Uh, funny story, uh, I was shooting an event and I usually have my peak design on my strap, on my dual camera strap. And I decided to just take it off so I could get some high angle shots. And without me realizing it, I naturally just like put it back into my camera strap, right? Usually I'm used to having it strapped on, but because I took it off earlier, I didn't know. So I literally dropped the camera like this, like, and it fell on the ground, I was like, shit, no. 
But luckily, this base plate saved the camera. It saved the lens, it saved the camera. I turned it on and off, and it was good. No problem, it still works fine. Plus, this small break. All right, let's talk about my lenses. All my lenses are Sigma DGDN. Uh, DN stands for these nuts. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> DN stands for these nuts. I don't have any Sony GM lenses because GM stands for got money and those lenses are super expensive. After watching a ton of Sigma and Sony comparison and reviews, I believe Sigma is the better and affordable option. Especially the DGDN and the R series, it's like 90 to 95% quality of the GM lenses and they're like half the price. So I'm like, it's a no brainer. It saved, you save half the price. Sigma, if you're watching this, please reach out. I love all your lenses. So the 16 to 28, I use this for vlogging um, is internal zooms. It's very small, lightweight, f2.8, perfect for vlogging. Uh, I love this thing, it's so small. All right, let's talk about this bad boy, the Sigma 24 to 70 DGDN F2.8. It's a heavy lens, it's a bulky lens, but it's really good quality. Uh, my only complaint is that over time, it does get dust, like you definitely see it inside the lens. Even though I have a UV filter, I still see dust inside, but whenever I stop down the aperture, I never notice the dust, so I'm I'm not sure what's going on, but keep in mind, it does collect dust inside the lens. My favorite running gun lens, my shoot weddings on a gimbal, this pretty much stays on my body like 99% of the time. I use this a lot for photos and videos. The next lens which I'm filming on right now is a Sigma 35mm f1.4 DGDN. Uh, all my lenses are DGDN. I love the 35mm, it's just one of my favorite portrait lenses. Uh, mixing it with my 85. The last lens I have is a Sigma 85mm f1.4 DGDN. I've been watching a lot of reviews and it's similar to the um, GM version of this lens. And honestly, for half the price, you can't go wrong with it. The build quality feels really nice. This is my money shot lens. I shot so many portraits, so many weddings. I always take this with me no matter what. Uh, I think it's a must have for portrait photography. All right, so next up is my Godox. Um, I use a VA60 version 3S for Sony. It's good to have a backup, so that's why I have two. I only use these for wedding photography mostly. Sometimes events, it kind of depends on the environment. And I have a... Um, I think this is called the Mag Spear or something like that. Um, it's a nice soft diffuser, it, like it's magnetic too. So I put this thing on here and, and it never falls off. Ideally, I want another one, but it is pretty expensive. It's like 120 bucks. So um, one is good enough for me. Next up is my Sony ECM B1M microphone. This is a shotgun microphone for Sony. It's electronic, so you just put it on the hot shoe and it works really well. I like it, it's small, lightweight. Um, has a bunch of settings so you can tweak it to whatever um, situation that you're in. The noise cancellation feature is really good. I usually have this on low cut and does a pretty good job. I keep this on auto all the time for vlogging and it never failed me. I used to attach a Rode Video Mac Pro on my camera, uh, which is filming the audio part right now, but the wire keeps like messing up the audio, so that really frustrated me. And it messed up a few of my weddings, so I was super frustrated. Next, I have the GoPro Hero 10 with the Man Max uh, lens. This lens basically allows me to keep my horizon lock. So if I mount the camera right here, this will always stay uh, horizontal, even if I tilt it to vertical. Uh, it's really nice to get behind the scenes of any shoots, so this definitely comes in handy. All right, so let's talk about lens filters. I have two lens filters. One of them is broken. Uh, my Tiffin Pro Mist 1 8th strength. I was vlogging and then it fell down and broke the lens. I was like, damn. I bought another diffusion, uh, the Cine Bloom 5%, which is filming me right now. Moment did say the 5% Cine Bloom is close to the Tiffin 1 8th. And I tried it out and I think it looks pretty much the same or if not like really similar. But I keep this around just sometimes in case I want to get creative shots because this is expensive. <laughs> also I have a couple of step up rings so I can mount uh, the Cine Bloom on any other of my portrait lenses. All right, right here, it's a power bank for my phone, uh, self-explanatory. I highly suggest you, if you haven't already, get a quick release plate. It changed my life. I don't know why I didn't get it sooner. It's just mounting cameras on and off is such a struggle. So having a quick release plate system, it's really um, fast. It makes your life so much easier. I've done your Lanzi one, F38. Um, I'll show you to you like right now. Um, it's on Mantis Pod. Uh, just, um, I have like a bunch, I have so many of these plates I just everywhere. I have like three or four of these and it's such a game changer. I just mount it on any uh, quarter inch screw, place it right here. There, it's done. Vertical, horizontal, done. So even with these like 
Tony, I have the small rig right here. I have a base plate right here with the Ulanzi. Look how easy that is. It's so nice. If you're not using it, you're missing out. You're wasting a lot of time mounting and unmounting your camera. And this saves a lot of time. All right, the next thing right on top of this backpack, I carry my, this is a camera dual strap harness. Uh, this is from Clever Close Supply. Todd is the owner and the maker of the strap and I really love it. It's super lightweight and it doesn't have like too many like metal things. So it's not like, it's not clunky, you know? And I think this is the first dual strap that integrated the Peak Design. Saving me so much stress when I shoot weddings and I need to like put my camera down. I just release this, uh, put it down, put it back on like this. Super easy, fast, what more, more could you ask for? All right, we also have in here, I keep my Sony chargers usually in, in the top department. So just in case I need to charge anything real quick, along with this department um, on the side right here, just like side pockets on this backpack. It's really easy to use because I like to put it on top. Then I guess open it up, get extra battery if I need to. This is a PGY Tech Mantis pod uh, version two. It's our main vlogging lens and it comes with a remote controller, which is really useful. Um, you can record yourself and take photos from a distance and I think that's really helpful, especially your vlogger. It has like mantis mode. You can clip this on anything and get unique angles. I've gotten a lot of unique angles in my room uh, using this. This is how it looks like standing up and then I could get super low like this if I wanted to. You can adjust this, it's a ball head, so you can adjust it like this and you can shoot vertical video if you want to. I really think this is like one of the best tripods, mini vlogging tripod out there. Okay, last but not least is my video tripod. I used the Yulanzi F38. It's a new tripod that Yulanzi just sent to me for review and it's carbon fiber, it's lightweight, it's small. It has a new locking mechanism and it's really fast. A little bit different than what I'm used to, but I think it's really intuitive. Fluid head is really nice and smooth for panning and tilting. I definitely recommend this tripod if you're looking for something lightweight, that's carbon fiber, that small, very smooth blue head for around 250 to 300 range. All right, let me know what you guys think about my camera bag for 2023. Feel free to drop in the comments what kind of camera gear that you carry for your camera backpack. All the gear that I mentioned in this video will be linked down in the description below. If you want to follow what I do and more of my personal life, you can follow my Instagram and my TikTok right here. It'll be really interesting to see next year uh, what changes in my camera backpack. So anyway, this video is also for myself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.